Hey everybody, welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Joey. And I'm Jeremy. And this week we're talking, we're getting in the winter spirit, you know. We're Hell talking yeah. we're talking about an album that I mentioned last year on my top five or whatever of 2020. The album is Life is, oh wait, what is the Life album? has gone on. Life has gone enough. on long enough. I was looking at, there's a song on it that is almost the title. <laughs> Life yeah. has gone on long enough by the band None. But it's like none, like N O N E, not like a like a churchy none. Yeah, and uh, I, I guess you, you probably said this last week, and I zoned out. Uh, but I remember predicting that this was going to be a black metal album. Yeah, you and did. I, I was right. You, yep. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, if it was on your list last year, then it was probably just buried in my subconscious. <laughs> also, you know, the the album title being "Life Has Gone On." long enough is is kind of a, a good indicator i think of yeah. the, the feeling or the mood of uh the album hashtag mood. hashtag mood um but yeah so so this is just just one of your one of your favorite discoveries of 2020 when did this album come out 2017 2017 okay so yeah. it wasn't super new it wasn't super old and it's just uh just a wintery a wintery feel for you and i think i agree I can I can totally feel that, but I have but, to make make a segue into oh, okay. track number one, and I don't know how to do it. <laughs> well, that uh, that segue is pretty bleak, damp, and dead, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, it's a very dead segue. Track number one, bleak, damp, and dead. He did yeah, it. just Joey, kick, Joey coming in, and saving it, kicking it off right there, man. He's, he's giving me a warm cabin to rest in amidst this wintry, snowy forest of black metal. <laughs> noisy uh noisiness so um what 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 what'd you think right off the bat there jeremy okay so, so this first track it starts off and it's it's i mean i guess the whole track really it's kind of this ambient ominous dark kind of soundscape thing that comes in there's some some piano there's some, some like synthy pipe droning going on there's some wind sounds and then there's like some soft clean guitar that kind of builds up and builds and builds and builds at the end and i really enjoy this as its own track but it definitely feels like it's connected to the next track as well which is, is so so i guess coming in full fully blind listening to this first time I'm like, okay i'm into this this is kind of moody it's kind of atmospheric and ambient and and i'm i'm here for it so i'm ready for what what's going to happen throughout this album okay um yeah you it pretty much like you said just blends seamlessly into the next song but yeah it's it it sets off the tone really well i agree like i it was kind of like i feel like i had maybe what your your initial reaction was the first time i listened to this album because i didn't necessarily know it was going to be a black metal album or anything Mm -hmm. but in listening to this song you wouldn't if you kind of are in the black metal scene or adjacent to it, you might think think about it. Like, I, I mean, right. if you see the the typeface that the band has written their name in on their yeah. like the album cover is just like pine trees in some like fog around like a wintry setting, and you're just like, ah, oh, that seems kind of black metal. And then yeah, <laughs> and then you hear it like you just see this picture of a world dead and gray. And you're like, yeah, this is probably black metal. Yeah, because those are those are the staples of black metal. You got you got forests, you got winter, you got track number two, a world dead and gray. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Kill it! You're on top of these segues today. I, I wish I, I could say it. that they weren't just off the top of my head, and I thought about them, but. Uh... No, it's more impressive that they weren't, you know, <laughs> you're killing it. But yeah, so A World Dead and Gray, this feels like a, a, a natural extension. Like, I feel like track one and two could be combined into one track where this is just kind of, this picks up at, like, the climax. This is where the, the album, I guess, starts, whereas the first track was more of an introduction thing. It adds in some, like, slow, simple drums. The guitars are, like, super fuzzy <laughs> yeah. as, as hell. And then you get these black metal vocals that I was kind of expecting. There's this huge, like, noisy sound of it all. And it kind of like, I don't know, I haven't listened to a lot of black metal. But this feels, 
less black metal. I mean, it's still definitely black metal, but it, it's it feels kind of like a fusion of black metal and like kind of doom metal. Yeah, and just kind of just the general like feeling and, and the grooving of it you're kind of like plodding through the snow whereas i feel like in my mind at least a lot of black metal is much more like upbeat and and more like in your face and aggressive where this is kind of just taking it in a, it's it's still a, a notably dark direction but it's a bit more like slowed down and it's not necessarily like going crazy yeah there's kind of been quite a progression of black metal from the roots and i mean back in the day yeah like it was just just hardcore as fuck like people just yeah being borderline just super edgy for the for the <laughs> hell of it yeah. and it was like full of like satanism people burning churches people just like throwing around dead pig heads in concerts like it was just insanity for the sake of insanity because they just wanted to like reject everything and just <laughs> yeah. kind of live their lives do their thing and then it kind of split off where there's like the true cult black metal that's this really mystical, has roots in like cult, occult stuff, Satanism, like all that type of stuff. Whether or not any of it's real or not, like right. they act like it is, so who knows. But then it kind of went into what this is, which is like the more, it's called like depressive black metal, sure. Um, sure. which there's subgenres of it, but yeah. that's kind of where this falls into and it definitely like i like doom metal a lot because it's super slow mm -hmm. and i feel like the w the wall of sound that this gets which like whenever we listen to death heaven um yeah. kind of that shoegazy big sound that they have where i feel like that's a wall of sound this i feel like is a blanket of sound but kind of the opposite of a blanket like instead of making you warm it just makes you cold. Like, it's just it's like... It's a breeze. A breeze yeah. of sound. And you're just like, oh, God. Like, you're just retreating into yourself. Where you're like, nothing's going to be okay ever again, is it? And uh, Yeah, and that's like... I, I feel like that's a big staple of what I imagine black metal to be. I mean, obviously, like, we, we joke about there being a lot of pine trees and wintry forests and stuff, which is... I mean, it's it's a, a cliche for a reason yeah. because it, it does prevail, at least in the imagery of it. And so it's hard to kind of not feel that. And with especially with some of the sounds used on this, like there's a lot of wind sound effects that kind of permeate the entire album. So you definitely get this kind of like cold sensation from it where you're, you're, you feel out in the wilderness and you feel like it's snowing and you feel like there's just this cold breeze constantly like trapping you in this kind of snowstorm yeah. of, of sound with the the fuzz on these guitars which is insane the song does mellow out a bit for what i presume to be the verse of the song uh but it's still kind of like hard to understand the vocals just because of how it's like mixed and recorded and stuff so i full disclosure this whole album uh i have no notes on lyrics because i couldn't really understand anything that was being said and it seems like nobody cares to try to write that down themselves yeah there, there were no lyrics that i could find online apart from in the song you yeah. can kind of hear him say uh, in the, the chorus section i think he says when the world was dead and gray which is i mean it's a song title so. yeah which that yeah that's like one of the only parts you can make out because part of this wall of sound goes along with them mixing the vocals so into the music. And the music is just so tinny. It's like they're trying yeah. to recreate, I don't know, like, it's kind of a cliche that, like, black metal was recorded on a fucking toaster in somebody's shed yeah. in the backyard. It's and, black metal if you're out in the woods and you have the shittiest amp and recording mic as possible. Yeah, like, and it's just, that's, I feel like they're kind of trying to go for that. And this band is kind of mysterious anyways. Like, they have... They've never come forward with like their names or who they actually are or anything like that. I, as far as I know, I don't think they play live shows, and mm -hmm. um, they don't release lyrics with any of their music either. So it's kind of just up for speculation as to what they're actually saying. And along with that, there's parts where you could just hear the vocalist kind of muttering to himself, and it's not yeah. screamed vocals. He's just kind of like incoherently talking in like a really 
frantic almost says that it's too fast paced or anything. It's not that fast paced, but it's just like, it seems like rambling of like somebody who's going insane. And yeah. And I, I think for that, I think it benefits this album because it kind of, at least for me, it, it turns it more into an ambient album, even yeah. though there are vocals where the vocals are just there as like another instrument. They're just there for texture and, and for kind of guiding I suppose the direction of some of, of the music. Uh, they have a lot of really long songs. This one's like almost eight minutes, yeah. which almost 11 minutes. If you include track one in it, it really takes its time, but I really dig that because it doesn't, it's, it's not rushing to go anywhere. It kind of just, it goes at its own pace, which is, is something that I, I guess I'd normally equate with like doom metal where it's kind of slower and it's kind of almost progressive but also this album is very much not progressive yeah uh so it's, it's kind of hard to say that but yeah I, re I really dig the sound of this track and and this album and stuff and it kind of ends with some more of the ambient wind stuff and the piano that was introduced in the first track yeah um and with there not being any lyrics i kind of left it up to just I don't, a lot of black metal, like you said, there's an atmosphere around it. There's an aesthetic, a very intentional aesthetic right. with it. And, uh, I mean, before we go any, any deeper into this stuff, um, I, I'm sure Jeremy has it pulled up, but yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna just throw out a disclaimer. There will be talks of hopelessness, of suicide, of just terrible feelings, terrible mental feelings a lot and uh that's just kind of it's kind of wrapped up in in the aesthetic in just the name of this album and everything so just throwing that out there before we deep dive into any atmosphere yeah there, there's a lot of i mean the album is called life has gone on long enough right it's kind of the theme of the album presumably if we could derive some sort of theme from the lyrics but uh yeah if you're having these thoughts please please don't don't take action on any of that the only action you should take is to ask for help call out talk to your friends talk to your family if you don't have them that you feel comfortable talking with talk to us or call the national suicide prevention lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 give them a, give them a call they have people there 24 7 to help you kind of process what you're going through because obviously you're not alone yeah right and that's that's the big thing i mean even the fact that this album exists should be reinforcing the fact that there are other people that have experienced the same things that you're kind of feeling. Definitely. And like, that's one of the things I really appreciate about albums. I mean, so the sub genre that this has kind of been placed into is technically called depressive suicidal black metal is it's yeah. DSBM. That's kind of like the colloquial name for it that people, I don't know, people attach to it because the lyrics are just super bleak. Like, the ones that you can make out are about feelings of hopelessness, describing what I assume to be already being dead, and equating that to the feeling of living, and also just wishing for it to be over. And it's... I don't... To have these feelings is, is a dangerous, terrible way to feel, and... But for some people, I've... This is kind of how I've always gone into it. You dive into it, and I know that... For some people, that's super dangerous. Like, yeah, that's that's definitely not the way to go about it. For you have to trust yourself. Yeah, and I don't know. Just listening to stuff like that, like this, and kind of realizing that okay, somebody else is also singing about it, and it just even in the, just this visceral way, it feels like I am the one screaming into the void here, into the yeah. woods. I am out in the middle of the cold, and I can see my breath. And I realize I'm still alive, even though I'm feeling this way kind of feeling. That's that's just where yeah. I go. It's it's kind of like this this primal catharsis from yeah. like I mean I mean just being being in the mindset of being out in a forest by yourself, totally isolated from people and just screaming your heart out and and letting out those inner feelings kind of thing and hearing someone else doing that not necessarily for you, but to, to be able to put yourself in that place and to understand what's going on and, and to immerse yourself in that. I mean, that's why music, I, I think that's why we're both kind of hashtag sad boys, right? When it comes to music is because it's nice to be able to 
in a way that a lot of people can immerse themselves in books or video games where they kind of put themselves in the shoes of somebody else. It's easy for me and presumably Joey as well to, to kind of get into an album in that mindset and just kind of like, even, even if we can't personally relate to what's happening in our real life, we can still kind of get this kind of empathetic connection to what the singer is singing and, and how the, the music feels and just kind of letting it kind of take over, which is very therapeutic for me at the very least. Yeah. And like I said, it's like, it's not for everybody in the same for way sure. that like sometimes, I don't know, sometimes what people need in their darkest moments is maybe reminders of the good things in life. And sometimes if people get those same reminders, if it's another person that just makes them feel worse because they don't feel like they have those things or something. It's everybody just needs something different. And yeah, like I totally, I think, I think you, you definitely have to trust yourself mm -hmm. on that. I feel like people, maybe, maybe I shouldn't generalize, but I feel like a lot of people can kind of understand what they need and what they don't need. And if you take something, take a step in a direction that you feel is a step backwards, or if it's making it worse by listening to sad music or something, then you have to trust yourself to stop doing that. Yeah. Right. You, you shouldn't just go one way or just the other kind of, you have to experiment. You have to know yourself and, and learn yourself and what, for lack of a better word, triggers you to be more, more or less, I guess, in that mindset. And so you can kind of help guide yourself out. And I think music is, is a great way to kind of find those boundaries and, and push them and see like, okay, well, if I listen to this, then I feel this way. If I don't listen to this, then I feel this way. And, and just kind of using that as a, as a nice guideline, I think has helped me kind of sort out my emotional baggage and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. Like, I don't know, just something about this album really makes me want to just go out into the woods. Like you said, where nobody else is around, just lay down on the, on the dirt and just bed the cold earth and feel nature all around me. Yeah, hopefully you're not naked when doing that, because I feel like it'd be, be a it'd be kind of weird, b it'd be kind of cold and probably <laughs> illegal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, depending <laughs> on it, you, I mean, if you're on private property, maybe I guess it's, it's, it's less so. But I uh, it's regardless, true. I think you should listen to track number three, "Bed the Cold Earth." Yeah, this song. So I mean, the okay. So we're gonna hit a point where <laughs> describing the tones and the tim tam tambers is that sure. is that the word? Yeah. For, because it's spelled like timber, but I think it's well, tambor. it's spelled like timbre, right? Timbre, yeah, yeah timbre. But uh, yeah, like describing all that stuff, it kind of gets the same. There's a lot of, uh, yeah. I mean, it, this song it starts out in an easier place, coming in with like a piano that is kind of like from the end of the previous song, and it's accented by like wind chimes or metal pipes being hit, like whatever sound that is, and. This one somehow seems even slower than yeah. the than the other one, but uh, yeah, it's it, the vocals. They get to these points where it's just like wailing or pain to screams. There's also moments where it sounds like just sobbing, but it's just I, I, something about it. Just I don't know what effect they're using on his screams that make yeah. them sound so hollow. But it it just I don't something about it just gets to me on like a basic level. Intense. Yeah, it's very primal, and it's very, like, I don't know, for for you, this album and this genre kind of puts you out in a forest with snow on the ground and stuff. For me, at least in this song specifically, it felt more cave-like. Yeah. Like, there, there's an echoey spaciousness to it, and with, like, all of those metallic kind of crystalline sounds dinging around and, and the drums, and I don't know, it all, it all felt very echoey, which kind of puts me in this, like, cavern underground somewhere without light and there's just like sound bouncing around everywhere uh so that's kind of where i went but yeah it's a very very cool feeling i i agree it it's this album becomes kind of samey or one note but i don't think that's a bad thing in this case i, I just think it could work against it if somebody came into this and wasn't immediately vibing with it or didn't understand the vibe or weren't in the mood for it you should not be expecting the album to change too much because it, it's very much one kind of mood. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a very specific mood that is captured and spread out across these eight tracks that I, I enjoy. 
I don't think one note is a negative in this scenario, even though I have used it as a negative in other <laughs> scenarios. I feel like it, 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 this album to me is something that like I I wouldn't put it on to, to have fun. I wouldn't put it on to like amp myself up or anything. This is kind of an ambient album, like I said, where I would just I would put it on if I was feeling in the the certain mood for it and just let it play and and not really like focus in on too much while doing so it's kind of more of like an experience album than like a music album i think yeah i 100 percent agree and i even like wrote just because i was just thinking maybe like why does it appeal to me so much i mean i love ambient music i like i'll listen to 50 minutes of just wind blowing if you can record it right like that but it appeals to me in the same way that like super trancey like house music appeals to me where Mm -hmm. It just builds kind of puts you in the zone. Yeah, you just get into a groove, and groove is a very loose term when talking about maybe this album, but <laughs> but like it just gets you in yeah a zone, and that's just where you're at, and it just kind of there's there's enough difference throughout it to be like ah things are shifting around me, but right its core it is feels, the same. Yeah, it feels like one long kind of track or one long piece i suppose like sitting down to watching a movie whereas maybe you could equate other quote-unquote normal albums to being like a tv show where you sit down you watch an episode you watch an episode you watch an episode and they each have their kind of own themes this feels more of like an ambient in that it's it's one full body of work that kind of you you don't skip around there's no like i don't at least in my mind i don't really demarcate any of the tracks from each other i just listen to the album and this album is one piece of work kind of a thing yeah that that was a that's a struggle for like music like this is that i found myself normally i just before i write my notes i write like all the song names and everything so i kind of have a way to break it up and this one i was just listening to it and i would be writing notes and writing notes and since all the songs are like three tracks later (laughs) yeah and all the songs are like seven eight minutes so i'm just listening to it and i'm just like yeah this song's pretty long but of course it is and before i know it yeah i'm like halfway through the album just writing notes on the first song i'm like shit i should have broken it up which i think i think is a good thing i also found myself doing that i I was just like i would i would put on the track and like okay now i'm writing notes for this track and i'd start it and i would just kind of like zone i would get into that zone and just kind of like get carried away and let it let it go and let it go and let it go and and I think it it benefits this album in that the way they mixed each track into each other for the most part kind of aids that kind of getting lost feeling of just kind of like getting in that zone getting in, in the pocket I'm not I'm not in the pocket because I'm not playing it but, <laughs> but just getting getting in the album and letting it go just it's, yeah. it's a great sensation I think they handled it well. They handled it really well, and to uh, to the point of them changing things up at least a little bit. As the song ends out, there's like this glockenspiel synth sound that they kind of like have at the very end as the song fades out, and it just sounds so wet. And I really like it. Like I I really like the use of synths for atmosphere here. Yeah, they do they do a good job. They do it good. <laughs> It kind of like it, it affects you a little bit. It gets gets a little bit. Maybe, maybe it's a little bit of a of a bad taste for some. Maybe it might be a little bit hypoxic, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm assuming is a thing. But I didn't actually look up what hypoxic meant because it, it seems something. Track number four is hypoxic. Well, Jeremy, hypoxia is a lacking of oxygen oh, that in makes the blood. It's a it's a lack lacking of oxygen in the blood. In this context, I'm assuming it's associated with somebody losing oxygen. As they're like dying, because that's yeah, just I I've definitely heard hypoxia, and I just <laughs> it didn't click in my brain for whatever reason. Uh, I could have made a better segue knowing that. No, that's fine. It's I mean like I don't know these songs don't really segue into each other. I mean I guess they do really well, but yeah, they don't. It, it they all kind of blend together, so we don't need super crazy segues over here. Yeah, it's all it's all one body of work. I actually don't have a lot of notes for this track, and I think it might have just been because this was... I mean, it's the middle of the album, and it was kind of just like I was invested in the album. I put it on, and I, I listened to it, and I'm like, yeah, this is 
everything that we have said previously about the music kind of still applies here. I mean, it's, it's got some more clean guitar. It's got the windy ambient effects going on. I think this one might be less doomy, less there, there's not as much of the fuzz going on in it, but yeah, this, this felt kind of like a brief mid track. Yeah, this one, it, it, it is kind of brief in the sense that it's like a minute longer than the other songs and it's seven minutes long, but it does, uh, I don't know. It's it's not as harsh necessarily. There's like these distorted wails behind the music at at this point where he's there's plenty of points where he's shrieking, he's screaming, he's crying, he's just muttering to himself. This is where some wailing starts. And um the song it it stays pretty mellow until around the 4 minute mark and then the drums come in with just these blasting kicks and then high tremolo picking comes in which is just a staple of like older black metal and yeah uh but then it kind of goes back to the, the the more mellow i guess clean feel and then there's some muttery speech at the end that gives it a very eerie feel and i feel like this one channels some older black metal and i i just i feel like it shows appreciation is a weird word to say because I'm about to reference Mayhem, one of the, they're considered kind of a four father type band to this general, like depressive black metal mm -hmm. deal. And a few, a few people from that band kind of broke off, did their own thing and created even more influential depressive black metal bands. But Mayhem is kind of where some of them got their big break, so to speak. But uh, yeah. I feel like this the imagery of this song it hits me in the same way that uh the vocalist for mayhem he uh went by the stage name dead um i don't know how to pronounce his actual name his it was like per ingve olin i don't know how to i don't know norwegian so <laughs> i can't i can't uh i can't really speak to that i mean actually i don't think he was norwegian sorry people he Oof. he he died in Norway. I think he was Swedish. I feel like that's a that's a cardinal sin you just committed. Yeah, yeah I think I think I just started like a fucking war. <laughs> it's a good thing nobody listens to our podcast. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so he kind of didn't necessarily start the corpse paint, which is like a big. It's it's mm -hmm. what you see whenever people are memeing black metal. It's like the right. kiss face paint. But he did it. He started it because I mean he was just a generally troubled individual and <laughs> like uh he did it's it a very because... polite way of saying it. <laughs> yeah yeah he uh so i mean he essentially just felt like a dead person and he that's how he just l actually felt to him like he just felt like this world was not for him he was he would bury his clothes before like before performing so he could dig them back up and they would have the smell of the earth on them. He would carry around dead crows in bags and smell them before performing. So he could, it to quote him, perform with the, the smell of death on his in his lungs. And he's just kind of where it starts. And that's probably, he, he kind of created this atmosphere that I feel like a lot of bands in this genre follow. And I mean, not... It's hard to say too much that's positive about it because <laughs> there's not a whole lot of positivity here. Yeah. But, I mean, he's kind of the one who started it all and I feel like that's where a lot of the atmosphere comes from. It's the music like this has, in ways, helped me. So, not saying thanks for doing all you did, Mr. Dead, but, like, it's... I don't know. It's just the through line to this music now. I'm I'm just glad it's here. Yeah, for and sure. And with without him it wouldn't necessarily have been here, I guess. Yeah. I I think that's fair. I mean, it's kind of like a not everyone's a fan of necessarily the Beatles, but you have to respect what the Beatles did for music. Yeah. Kind of a thing and without the Beatles then like we'd probably be in a totally different universe kind of a thing going on. Yeah. Um but Man, I feel like I just really 
corroded what little bit of positivity we had here. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, music. Music is a positive thing, and, and yeah. the fact that we we're, we're able to bond over it and talk about track number five, corroded, is <gasps> is a good thing. I think that's that's all the positive I need out of it. Yeah, there we go. Positive segue. Yeah, so corroded track number five. This one blends in from hypoxic, and it it has kind of more of the same again, but it starts. This is the 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 track specifically for me that I noted all of the the vocals that are coming in. It starts with some kind of like sad boy clean vocals that are echoing something incoherent, and for me this was like it felt like he was in some catacomb somewhere underground. So taking that that tu- the cave tunnel feeling from bed the the cold earth and kind of refining it a little bit it felt more catacomby like he's just walking among the dead kind of a thing and there's a lot of like echoey crying and mourning and, and stuff that honestly to me it sounds kind of cheesy yeah and a lot a lot of it towards the end of this album he kind of he does it more and more where the, there's these moaning and, and the sobbing and, and this crying and stuff which kind of it, it's a bit uncanny I think I, I I don't want to discredit him if he was genuinely like just vocalizing what he was feeling, but I don't know. There, there there's something about it that kind of made me smile and, and chuckle. Just how how over the top it it sounds at points. I will say I hit I hit that point. I mean I've listened to this album so many times that like I know it's coming, but yeah, it there are definitely times where and like you said, not to shit on this guy if this is just actually. I mean, it's it's not like it's never been done where somebody just ha- is having a breakdown and goes in to record it to put it in yeah, their look music. You, look at you, Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, Slipknot. Produced a great <laughs> album, Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, what happened but, uh, to you, Slipknot? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it kind of gets a little a little bit like a caricature of what you'd think yeah. somebody going through some, some crazy shit would sound like. Um, but to the music's point, it, this is where I feel like it starts to get almost beautiful. There's like a piano that comes back in for this song. It's playing a nice and somber piece over this music that's kind of swelling behind it where it sounds like there's some strings in there. I'm sure it's just synths, but it's a, it's a yeah. nice sound. And then it f- builds and builds, kind of fades back to just the clean guitar bass and then some whispers around the three minute mark. And it really builds the out- atmosphere where it. I feel like this song goes even more ambient than at least musically than the rest of the song so far. I agree. Except for the end when it kind of, it it builds (laughs) and builds and then it it kind of like the song dies out, I guess. And then it just slams into the next track with the kind of, which is another kind of cliche thing they've done. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily cliche. It feels like a cliche amongst this album. They do a whole lot where they use these big drum hits to kind of transition as it just does like a big noise to kind of transition into the next track or the next section section, which kind of got, I it's, I don't want to say it got annoying, but it was just like, okay, okay. They're doing this again. <laughs> kind of Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, dum, dum, push, and then like the, the thing starts and that happens like four times in the album. Yeah. And there's only eight tracks. So like, I, I don't know. I felt like it was, it was a bit of a, a gimmick. For them to just use it because they didn't know how to transition between some of the sections well but it does pack a punch the first time or two you hear it and I, I think it's a cool effect and again i really enjoy the sound of this album so i'm not necessarily shitting on it for it for doing so but it was just something i noticed yeah with not just the, s- there's definitely room for criticisms even in albums that you like people if, if there's one thing to take away from our podcast that's what it is don't yeah, be afraid to like, criticize. You can, you can shit on things you love. <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's you, most of what life is. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be all you don't always have to be so considerate with the the artist's intentions. Sometimes you might want to be desiderate yeah. of their, their intentions. Desiderate is also <laughs> the name of track six. Desid desiderate desiderate. It means it's like I think it means like full of desire or longing. I looked it up earlier, but I it wasn't impactful enough to me as a word <laughs> to note it. So <laughs> To entertain or express a wish to have or attain. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's probably roots from the same place desire does. But yeah, this one, like you said, immediately hits back into that tinny, harsh distortion that's on the earlier songs. I do really like the keyboard melody that they play mm-hmm. 
over the rest of the music. It like almost sounds a little hopeful at times, which is <laughs> weird given. Well, it, it makes sense if, if the song is desiderate where he, he's, he's longing for something. Yeah. Right? I guess he, that's he, true. He's, he's entertaining the, the desire that he has and saying, Hey, there's something, there's a good thing that I want. It's, <laughs> Whether or not he'll get it, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, because it's a black metal album called yeah. Life Has Gone On Long Enough. <laughs> but you can always be hopeful. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, this one also has some some more of the kind of cheesy sobbing and moaning that, that goes on in it. I just, I don't know, I feel like, I, and this is definitely a personal thing for me, I, I don't like the when things get so, like, characterized. Like, I mean, anime, for example, a lot of that stuff is just extremely over the top. Yeah. And they're, they're extremely, like, just just 100%, 120% just all the time. And that's kind of a turnoff for me. And I felt like I kind of hit a similar vibe with the the moaning and, and sobbing in this. Where it's like, okay, okay, I understand what you're doing, but but that's enough. You don't, you don't got to go so, you don't got to lean so hard into this. Yeah, this is the song where I kind of put, like, it was... I think I yeah I just phrased it and this is where the wailing begins just unintelligible <laughs> wails at the back of the music yeah <laughs> it's what? it's it's wild it's it's fun it's cool and I think it it fits well in the album it's yeah. still it's it's not enough to take me out of the zone that we've created here but it, it, but, it definitely like it's something to note yeah. that it it kind of like it it starts to crack the zone I think for me. Yeah, this one, and I mean, the music is still super cool here. There's like a nylon string guitar that comes in with what sounds like some dripping wetness in the background, which I eventually led from the woods to a cave or like a cellar or something is kind of where my mind oh, yeah. went. Like he's, he's, whoever this protagonist person is, is leaving the woods to enter a cellar. And this is kind of where they started their journey towards that. But uh, th something about this song just seems super mournful. But it's like not mourning a loss of life. It's like mournful in the way that regret or nostalgia is mournful. Like not being sad for a person who died, but for potential. Or being yeah. sad for time that is lost. And it's just, I don't know, maybe that's why it gets me so much is because that's that's the meme here is that i'm nostalgia man and the song reminds <laughs> me of like the bitter side of nostalgia where it's like there's just not regret i don't know what word it is i mean nostalgia i guess is the right word but just like the longing for the past but this song also hits me in like a bittersweet hope for what the future could be but yeah. almost like you don't think that the the hope that you have for the future is going to happen yeah you kind of have this feeling that life is long enough and you you might not you might not make it farther than than you're kind of hoping for yeah and also you might not make it too much longer because there's only two album two songs left on the album one of which track seven <laughs> life is long enough <laughs> yeah. it is it is indeed track seven this one again builds off the prior track um and it, it brings where I think Desiderate kind of drops off with the energy, this one brings it back up for this kind of last push. Because to me, at least, I feel like this is the true ending of the album. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, so this is the last original song, I should say, on yeah. this album, because the, the final track is a cover of Burzum. So to me, it, it felt like this is kind of where they finished their part. I suppose of the album and that's not to say that track eight is a jarring change i think track eight still definitely fits within this album and i, I wouldn't listen to this album without track eight necessarily but uh yeah i i feel like this this is kind of their last push their last big contribution to the, the sound of this album yeah and it definitely gets big like that's kind of what i put in in my summation um just that it gets really it's like their climactic ending yeah. and it's they still do the th this song's almost eight minutes it's four seconds shy of eight minutes long 
Yep. And it does have this big climactic part where the music just gets huge. Like it's bigger than it has been at any other point on the album. And it just hits home the deep emotional vacuums that have kind of been present throughout the album. And I put it's hollow in the absolute fullest sense of the word, but rereading <laughs> that kind of doesn't make any fucking sense. So I don't know uh, what I was poetry. talking about. It doesn't have to. Yeah, I guess that's true. But uh, <laughs> it's like he starts like actually yelling too. And there's also a bunch of laughing too, which is kind of like it's along I'm the same. Link. Yeah, like it's it's eerie, I guess. Um, but then around five minutes, like five and a half minutes, it starts fading back and there's a little bit of the crying again before these scratchy whispered vocals come in over some echoey piano. And then it kind of just rides out with this, there's this choir like synth that comes in to give it an extra ominous feeling, but then just this rumbling wind comes in and it just keeps building this atmosphere until you hear footsteps leave the track. Yeah, and that they walk straight in into track number eight, which is uh, hmm? I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it. Hmm? It's ah. it's a bur okay I'll try it's it's a Burzum cover the the I think it's called Illa Tidan Tidandi I don't know I, there, so there's a character in it that I'm not familiar with it is not an English character. I that, looked it up in the second word, and I think it's supposed to be pronounced like a th so like Tidandi, but oh, I'm Tidandi. But I'm not actually sure if that's right because, I mean, this song is written in uh, Old Norse is what the language of the actual song title is. Because gotcha. the, the Burzum album that it's taken from is a song about, I guess, like one of the Norse gods, Baldur, dying. And this is one of the songs from that. So all the songs' titles are written in Old Norse. So I don't know how that character translates to modern day English, but yeah. that's what I found online. <laughs> well, it's something, and, and it, it, you can find it, I'm sure, if you just Google Illa, Illa Tadondi or Tathondi, I'm sure it'll come up for you. But yeah, it's it's a Burzum cover, but it still very much feels at home, I think, on this album. The, the wind and the footsteps kind of transfer over in this one, where it sounds like someone's just like trudging through snow. And then eventually they come to this kind of rickety wooden cabin kind of thing. And they, they step inside and close the door. And that's kind of where the song part of this track starts. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's another instrumental song. Um, and just, it's just like this piano. Whenever you hear the footsteps go into what's, this is kind of where I got the cellar from. Because it sounds like there's a creaking door opening and then closing. Yeah. And the wind stops, like the wind in the background. So I'm. You're inside somewhere now. For sure. And this, this piano just comes in playing a really just somber melody. It's haunting. And it kind of plays throughout without much background to it. Like there's been so much of a of an ambient background, like wall of noise, blanket of noise. And there's none of that here. It's just the piano with some background song or some background sounds and everything sounds echoey as if it's played inside of a small room and i won i was wondering so burzum we're we're separating the music from the artist here whenever <laughs> we, we talk about burzum if you yeah. want to look up the list of shit that bard mccurnis <laughs> is has done has said has everything do it but just know yeah. that i i've done my own looking into this band and I don't think they, they don't at least outwardly present anything that is in support of anything that he's done. It's just, <laughs> I think this is strictly like, he kind of forged a genre. He was in Mayhem, the same band <laughs> as Dead. He, and then he went off to make Burzum and kind of really got this whole genre off the ground and then was just a fucking nut job. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but uh, so he, this song was recorded on a synth on a tape recorder in prison and the I would, original not the discover or, yeah the original okay. the original and i was wondering if they were hearkening back to that whenever they did this what from what sounded like it was in an echoey room i didn't know if that was part of it or if that was just part of the atmosphere of this this album that kind of like it hit me where i was like i wonder if how much they're paying homage to the original or if this is just part of their their vision for this album yeah 
I, f- I feel like it could almost be symbolic, right? So this whole this whole album's kind of someone's journey through hardship, and at the end they have found their kind of final resting place. Maybe yeah. maybe maybe they have found you know their their final resting places and dying, or maybe they, they they've found some somewhere a bit warmer. Although this it doesn't feel warm. Nothing yeah. on this album feels warm, but notably cutting out all of that ambient noise and, and a lot of that stuff. And there, there's kind of this sense of finality to it. There's there's conclusion, there's resolve, I suppose. And it feels like this is the end of that day, of that life, of this album kind of a thing. So I, I think it works very well as a, kind of a capstone to to just end the album in a nice instrumental way. Yeah, I agree. And for a while, I was wondering, because I mean, like we both said, the previous song, Life is Long Enough, that kind it sounds like a, per, a, a nice ending, a good ending yeah. to the song, because it even has their own little ambient outro to it. So it could, right. have, it even has the big climax within kind of the easing you into the end. And it made me wonder, like, with how much kind of hopelessness and stuff that it's talked, not to, I guess not talked about. I don't know what the fuck they're saying on this album, but (laughs) that is felt from this album. Uh, It makes me wonder if they're trying to create a feeling of uh, it. Everything feels like to have a nice ending. It needs to be this big climactic ending that in life tie, like you see on TV, it's tying up all the loose ends, everything. It's Mm -hmm. big shits happening to this, to the end. But most of the time that doesn't happen. Most of the time things just end unceremoniously yeah. with without much pomp and circumstance. It's just <laughs> it makes me wonder if that's what this is. If it's kind of just like the going back there things don't always end on a great note. Things don't always end on this big huge thing that makes wraps everything up in a nice bow and this is just like the continuation of the ambience that makes you sit in it for a little bit. Yeah, this is maybe, maybe I feel like it could maybe be both, and that life is long enough could be some kind of big ritualistic ceremony for the end of either this person's life or or this time period or or whatever this this chapter is, whatever the story is, where there's the kind of celebration of it the the funeral the the party the the whatever the big publicized event aspect of it and then after that the protagonist kind of retires back and it's like okay well now now that that's now that everyone is satisfied with what has happened i can actually like end things on my my terms yeah in a more like peaceful way where i want it to end instead of this big publicized manner <sighs> what a joyous album. <laughs> Not at all. It was fun. I really I really enjoyed this. This was good. It is a bit cheesy for me. And it's incredibly moody. Yeah. And I, I like that about it. Uh, I think it's not... I, I don't know if I would put it up on like a, a track of greatest albums kind of a thing because of some of the, the cheesier aspects to it. I feel like it could have been refined and had more of an impact. But it is, it's a very good album to just kind of like throw on his background noise and just zone out to. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like it has a, it's a good vibe and it is getting colder outside. So I think it, it fits perfectly up. I might come back to this at some point when I just need to, to zone out because it's, it's, it's good shit. Well, awesome. There's plenty more like it. There's there's a whole fucking <laughs> list of whole albums that probably sound almost like this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they have lyrics too. But yeah, I, I think that might take away from it. Honestly, if I knew what this guy was saying, because it might be might be even cheesier than I suspect. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was a good, it was a good wreck. Um, next week we're doing an album that I picked out of the list that we have because I had no idea where to go with this. And we're not really getting into any uh, series or, or journeys or anything right now. So I picked uh, Lacey Sturm, her solo album called life screams, which I think is from like 2016 ish. I could be wrong. I don't have the date here, but yeah, Lacey Sturm, she was formerly the, the lead singer of the band Flyleaf back in the day. Uh, this is her solo album that came out a while ago. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to what we will talk about next week 
about it just because of some of the things I know about Joey and the fact that I really enjoy this album and I'm curious what, what you have to think and then say about this album, not to build it up too much. I don't expect there to be any grand revelations, but <laughs> I think it'll be a fun time to talk about it next week. Uh, if you guys have thoughts on none or Flyleaf or Lacey Sturm, let us know in the comments. You can always reach out to us on social media and whatnot as well. Send us some, some memes, maybe send us some black metal. That's what we'll do. Post your favorite black metal meme in the comments yeah. <laughs> do it. Uh, on, on social media. Send us black metal memes because I always love them. One of my favorite ones I was thinking about this weekend or this week, maybe it was this weekend. There was one I posted in our Discord a while back that was, uh, I don't remember the format. I couldn't find it again. But it was basically like the, the top pain was me saying... Oh, sorry, I can't come. I can't come hang out because I have things to do. And then it's just as me also, and it's just like a dude standing in his basement, staring at a, ba a blank basement wall with black metal music playing in the background. I'm like, yeah, hell I yeah, like that shit. It's a good meme. So That's send nice. us memes. I, I like shit like that. We love memes. We're memesters. We we get some laughs on some on behalf of the black metal industry, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, come back next week where we'll we'll be listening to Lacey Storms. Life screams. Stay in our feedback loop. Bye.